But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, please invite your friends. Uh, over to the uh, topic, uh, it's not really something I like to talk about. You know, I don't like politics. Uh, and I don't like the topic of war, especially if it's between two Christian countries. Uh, you know, before we start talking about this topic, we pray to the Lord that this war will never happen. And uh, Satan will not be able to proceed and ignite the fool into a fool act. There is no Christian would encourage war. The Lord bless those who make peace, not war. And today, what I'm going to say, as usual, it might make some people uncomfortable, but this is my personal opinion. If you look at the news, you know, the one who controls the news is the Western media, not the Russian media, really. I mean, the Russian, they tried. They have Russia today trying to have a place. But the one who controls the news for real is the media of the Western. And we know the Western media. Uh, is not different from the Russian media. Both of them, they lie a lot. Both them, both of them, they change the color of the issue. And both of them, they have a propaganda, which means there's no news in the news. You know, always when we say news, you imagine somebody delivering news to you, like this is what happened. But in reality, those people, they don't deliver news to you. They try to make you the news, which means they try to persuade you, make you believe in something, even if it's not. I remember through the few years, last few years in the war in Syria, how Fox News is speaking about we should attack the regime in Syria. Okay, we attack the regime in Syria and what we will do next. Oh, you know, we give a democracy. Huh? Is that the same democracy you did in Libya? The same democracy you did in uh, in Gaza? The same democracy you did in uh, uh, in Iraq? The same democracy you did? I mean, everywhere it's messed up. So they wanna they wanna kill the guy just because he opposed them. Who is a not really a Muslim? He don't care for Islam. He's against Islam actually. And they want to replace him by a terrorist. Now, he's a dictator. Well, isn't it all your friends are dictators? All the friends of the West are pure dictators. The king of Jordan is not a dictator, right? <laughs> the king of Saudi Arabia. I mean, the Western countries, they present for me a witch, a witch who claimed to be the witch hunter. All right, and this is from one side. Now, from the other side, we have Russia. Russia is a huge 
powerful country and they have their ambition too and they want to be an empire and putin he is an ex-kgb this guy he don't play on one hand on one side we have a bunch of idiots in the west like joe biden who do not remember his name on the other hand we have putin who is extremely smart extremely quiet he don't make too much noise if he make noise he bothered the whole world america make noise nobody care because people used to their noise they talk too much they do nothing usually so what is ukraine in this in this game what is the part ukraine is playing ukraine is the victim ukraine is the victim you know if you uh, in order to play a football game you need the ball and this is exactly trying to do what trying to do to ukraine ukraine is the ball this poor country is paying the price of the beast fighting over power they are victims many naive they think like ukrainian themselves those who they are sponsored by russia or those who they are opposed by russia and sponsored by the west both of them they are being used for the agenda of those beasts when the american they say we are going to give ukraine a weapon and then you look at the weapon they are giving them it's like a firework compared to the war if it's happened this is i mean this is not even a weapon you will see how much they are pushing the war i'm seeing the the the, the nato they are the one who's pushing for it because they will lose nothing Ukrainian will be killed. They will be slaughtered, actually, not only killed. We know that this war is no, there's, there are no match. Even though they are defending their land and they have the right to defend their land. But they are no match. And the Russian, they are forcing them to go to war too because they are telling them, we are going to have missiles in your backyard. We are going to make Ukraine join the NATO. We are getting closer and closer to your borders. Actually, they are in the borders already. When the Russian they decide to give some missiles to Cuba, Cuba, the American they went crazy. What are you talking about? And almost we went in war, nuke war, with the Russian. So it's okay for us to get closer, surround Russia from every corner, but it's not okay for the Russian to do what we do. So the way I look at things here, I see that the Ukrainian. They should be smarter. I support them. I support their independence. But they should not be the puppy of any of those beasts. Because Americans, they don't care for you. Actually, this is what they did to the Georgian. I mean, history repeats itself. Only fools don't see it. When, the, when George Bush, he promised the Georgian support, and the Georgian, they said to themselves, uh-huh, we have American in our back. Mm-hmm, yeah. And then the Russian came. And then the president of Georgia, he keep calling George Bush. And George Bush, he don't answer. He's playing golf, like Trump. All of them, they play golf. And this is exactly what will happen if the Russian did really invade Ukraine. The first thing Biden will do, he will play golf and his phone will be off. Joe Biden, he care to call Ukraine if you want to give his son a job in Ukraine to make him a billionaire. The prime minister of England, this guy with the hippie hair, he is so excited to support Ukraine. But all of us, we knew that there is no support. It's a joke. If those people really want to support Ukraine, they will send their army immediately. But they will never do, even if Ukraine, all of it is gone. So what this support is about? I believe strongly that 
NATO is dreaming that Russia is going to invade Ukraine. So they can use that as an excuse to put the maximum pressure on Russia for future negotiation, not to control Russia. Nobody can control Russia. Yesterday, we heard the news that the Americans, they are willing to negotiate directly with the Iranian. How come? They never, they never show interest. So they are saying to themselves, if things will go wrong with the Russian and oil price is going skyrocketing, we need to open the oil of the Iranian so the price will go down. So now somebody will get a benefit from this conflict. The first one is Iran and Hezbollah. They will sign an agreement, fast agreement, in case something happened. In case something happened, you will see. So if a war started, they will sign in 24 hours agreement with the Iranian. So they can lift the sanctions, so the Iranian, they can put their oil in the market. So the oil market will not be going so crazy. And then the American, they told the Russian, be careful not to cut your gas and your oil from Europe. I mean, they see the stupidity. They want to put sanctions on them. And they are saying, accept the oil and the gas. But this is all what they, they care for. I mean, <laughs> this is the madness of this. This, you know, this is, this is how stupid is Joe Biden and Democrat. They cut our pipeline. So now we cannot be dependent from anyone. Even us, we are buying Russian oil in case you do not know. In case you do not know. So, uh, NATO is not in a place to defend anyone. In fact, they cannot even defend their own. Maybe many of you do not know that the army of uh, UK is not even in the size of Hezbollah army. Hezbollah in Lebanon have 100,000 fighters. UK army is 86,000. <laughs> oh, you can imagine, which means if, uh, if, if the terrorists in England, they decide to announce caliphate, the British soldiers are not enough to control the indoor problem, not the outdoor. All the NATO army together is not equal to the Russian army alone. In the top of that, the Russian army is not just numbers. You see, numbers mean nothing these days, right? But in fact, they do. If they have the two aspects of power, the technology and the numbers of fighters. And the Russian, they have technology, which even we don't have. Maybe you do not know. Until now, we are using their missiles to use to go to the space. And the funny Joe Biden is a threatening to cut technology at the Russian, which I find it very funny. Because that is actually is going to empower the Russian, not the opposite. You know, when you, when you cut a product from a country and they have a very advanced, you know, I mean, they have already, they are not, this is not Iraq. This is not Syria. This is not, uh, you know, this is Russia. When you put sanctions in those people, you are forcing them to make the product at home, which means it's going to be for their benefit anyway. And not only that, the price of currency in their currency, the, the people, they will keep their money indoor because they are not buying it from abroad. At the same time, you will keep buying their product, which is gas and oil. So they will bring money in and their money will never go out. But where is Ukraine in this? Ukrainian, and I look at this president, the current president that they have now, he looked like a, a fool, you know, an idiot in the village. And he is a believer in NATO. He thinks, you know, like in Ukraine, you will see the NATO flag everywhere, NATO, NATO, but they are not member of the NATO. Why you are putting the flag there? What is that exactly? And this is actually making the Russian go crazy. It's like, like this guy, this idiot, 
he is trying to 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 make the, the Russian go crazy. He's asking them to do it without knowing how how bad the consequence actually of joining the NATO. First of all, why you want to join the NATO? You see, if you look at the map. You will find that Ukraine is important for everybody. And if the Ukrainian, if they have a real president, not like this guy, this guy is an actor. If the Ukrainian, they have a good president, he will be a friend to everybody. No enemy, zero enemy. Not Russian, not American. We will not be part of the NATO. We will not be a part of Russia too. We will be an independent country. And then you will see that everybody will try to spoil you because everybody's trying to win you to his side. And actually, this is what's happening now. The Western countries are trying to win Ukraine to their side, but they don't want to fight for Ukraine, and they will never do so. And maybe you ask yourself why Ukraine is important. If you look at the map, not only the location is very important, but this is the food. Actually, the first thing I ask myself, if the war happened in Ukraine, how much the price of a bread will be in the Middle East? In case you do not know, Ukraine is number one bread maker for many countries. And you know bread, uh, you know if you, if you remember in the Bible, it's speaking about the bread, right? Like the bread is so important. So even Jesus had described his body as the bread. Why? Because this is the Middle Eastern culture. Bread is our food. It's not anything else. If you invite me to your home and you put a big, big meal, anything, whatever you can imagine, and there's no bread, I ate nothing. You offer nothing. You have to put bread. So Ukraine is a big provider for many crops like wheat and etc., whatever you can make in a bread or making even your cake. And many countries will have another revolution just because of the bread. The same what happened in France in the time of Napoleon when uh, they told uh, the wife of the, the emperor that the people don't have a bread to eat. She said, let them eat cake. So this part of the country of Ukraine is a very important part which is feeding many, many countries. Many countries. And especially in the Middle East. Many, many government will collapse if the price of a bread goes skyrocketing too. So and if the Russian are going, uh, if, the, if, the, if the price of gas and oil will go crazy, and the price of a bread will go crazy, and price of oil, oil cooking will go crazy, you know, you can imagine what will go crazy in your land too, you know, because this will affect you. So the reason, the reason that everybody is fighting over, over Ukraine, Ukraine have many uh, resources. We, we just mentioned little, little, little of them. Some of them, they are really extremely important, but we are just talking about food for now. And location, strategic location, a flat land, which is good for farming, bad to defense, which will make it easier to the Russian to invade if they decide to invade, because mountains always is the most difficult, even if you have airplanes. So the Ukrainian, they should not fall into the trap they should not give the chance to the Russian to attack them by not giving them the reason to attack. Now, you might say, well, you know what? It is the Russian who is taking the land of the Ukrainian, not the opposite. I agree. I agree. But you will notice with me that instead of the president of Ukraine to go to the most important part, to free, which is Crimea, or Crimea, as they say it, is going to a different part, which is not really the most important. This is the most important part which is taken from Ukraine, and now it's part of Russia.
he is going to a different direction. And it looked like he's asking the Russian to do the same as he did to the Crimea. They say, okay, we will make this part of Russia now. Because this guy, he will keep asking for it as long as it's not part of Russia. You know, any, any leader, when he want to start a war, he should first ask himself, if we start the war, are we going to gain our land or we will lose more land? If the answer that we will lose more land, that means this president is stupid. You don't go for war unless you are ready for war. At least you can resist, not only win. Maybe you cannot win, but at least you can, you know, stop the army of the enemies to come to you. But in this situation now, Ukraine cannot do any of those, cannot stop, cannot defend, and cannot win the land. Two months ago, the Ukrainian government, they show a video of them using a Turkish drone, hitting some targets in this area, which is very stupid of them to do. Then the Russian, they said, okay, well, you get the Turkish airplanes, we will get you missiles can hit the Turkish airplanes from 200 miles away. Try now. So they are, they are buying weapon, spending their money in silly weapon, which is useless in such a war. You are fighting Russia. You are not fighting, you know, the Ukrainian army can, can be a strong army if they are fighting maybe uh, Iraq, maybe even Turkey. But this is Russia, which the American, they do poo-poo in their pant if the Russian really decide to go in war with us. So uh, uh, this is how I see the situation. Now, is the war is going to happen? I believe there's no war. And why I believe there's no war? This Putin is so smart, you know? Because he's smart, he will not go for war. The most important part, Putin, he wanted, it was a Crimea because he don't want anyone to control the Black Sea. He was so worried that if Ukraine in the future joined the NATO, then the NATO will suffocate Russia in the Black Sea. As you see how important Crimea is in the, in the, in the, in the map. So he got the Crimea, which is extremely important, and now they connected the land with Russia by making a huge bridge. It was them billions of dollars so the russian they got really the big cake they want which is their security the rest is not really too much important the rest actually is a cake for negotiation which mean they want the ukrainian to come and say okay listen you forget about this part here Crimea. we will give up in that part and let them go back to you but you give them like kind of confederation ruling This is what the Russian they want. At the same time, they want to be sure that the, the Ukrainian, they will not really go into the NATO. So they are putting all this pressure saying to them, listen, this NATO thing, don't even think about it. And maybe the U Ukrainian government, they are desperate for joining the NATO, but all of us, we knew that the NATO will never dare to join anyone unless the Russian let it happen. If they knew that the Russian they will go in war for it, then the NATO will stay in their place. Same time, what is the benefit of joining the NATO? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because if Ukraine joined the NATO, that will not stop Russia from attacking Ukraine. Because for a very simple reason, this NATO will never defend Ukraine even if they are part of the NATO. You know, when uh, Turkey almost invaded Greece, there's only one president he cared to support the Greek people. It was the French president. This is just last year. Greece is part of the NATO. When the Turkish invaded Cy Cyprus, it is the same. They took half of the country in front of the eyes of everybody. And the NATO didn't even move. So what this NATO is for? The NATO is just made for America. It's not even for France, it's not even for England, 
is not even for it's made for America and the rest are dummies or let us say they are toys for the American they don't feel security unless the American there the American they have more than a million active soldier they have extreme superpower and nukes technology and all those countries even the ones who have nukes like France and England they are not secure without America so the NATO is simply a bunch of uh, uh, cats around a big cat, a lion, you know, and that is America. On the other hand, Russia do not need uh, such a NATO. They are, by their own, bigger than the NATO. They have the biggest land in Earth. They have the most powerful resource. Russia can close their borders and they do not need oil, they do not need feed, they do not need food, they do not need wood, they do not need anything. This is a continent by itself. Their borders actually goes all the way to USA. Somebody saying, do you dislike America? My friend, I was in the American army. This is my country, I love this country. But why people, when, when you say the truth, people get upset? Few days ago, I made fun of Lebanon. Some Lebanese, they get upset, but I'm not making fun of you as Lebanese. I'm making fun of Lebanon. The country is messed up. It's a farm. There's no president. There's no government. There's no police. People, they don't understand that the truth should not side with anyone. If you want to really find a solution for a problem, it's not by sugarcoating things for your friends. My friend is the one who make me cry by telling me the truth, not the one who laugh and say you're right when I'm wrong. So if I hate America, I will never join the USA Army, which means I was willing to give my life, and still, this is my country, this is my passport. But the truth is the truth. Imagine if the Russian are the one who is doing the same to USA. Imagine if the Russian, they make Mexico join their own NATO. What the American will do? Just think about it for a second. When long time ago during the Soviet Union, the Russian, they said we want to place at that time Soviet Union, we want to place some missiles in Cuba the American went not, and even they threatened to invade and even to attack, nuke attack, in Russia. When a general in Panama did not like the American, we invade Panama. So we replace him. So America always invade countries if we don't like their president. And now they are saying that the evil Russia, or the evil Putin, he want to invade Ukraine, so he can change the president. So we can do it, they cannot do it. You see, the, you see the hypocrisy? We can invade your country to replace your president, regardless if he's elected or not. But you cannot do the same. We can go and take Saddam Hussein. For no reason, just tell me why you attack Saddam Hussein. <laughs> I don't find a reason. We can go and replace al Qazafi. We can kill him by airplanes. We can change president, we can put a new president, we can tell countries what to do, what to, what to do, what to eat, what not to eat. But you cannot do the same to us. And this is how dirty this game. I find that this war, and God forbid it will not happen, the only one who would love it is a country like Turkey. You know, the hyena, Always, he finds his place when two lions kill each other. Two Christian countries, they will, they, they will you know, hundreds of thousands of people will die. And the hyena, he will live with, uh, you know, with the leftover of the meat. This is where Turkey come. Nobody will be happy with this war. And actually, every single one of you will be impacted if a war happened because the price of oil will go so crazy, which means your heating bill, yeah, no, I don't know what where you live, but your heating bill, your, uh, your car, your transportation, your food, because remember, oil control all prices. 
not only to make a bread for you, in order to cook it, you need energy, but to transport, to put it in the shelf, to turn on the electricity. Germany, as an example, is captive now by the Russian. Because the stupid German, they stop all the nuclear facilities which generate electricity for themselves because they want to go green. Suddenly they want to go green. How are you going to go green and you are buying gas? Anyway, so now they cannot even survive without a Russian. That's why you see Germany don't dare even to speak one word negative against the Russian. Because this guy, he can stop the faucet and Germany will freeze. The stupid Biden, he support the Russian without knowing. First day, actually, he's now he know. First day he took office, he left all the sanctions Trump he put in the pipeline coming from Russia to Germany. It was Biden who did that. But when he did that, already Ukrainians are suffering from taking their land. So why you did that? You see how they how how filthy this this. Uh, how in the world you are telling the Ukrainian that you are supporting them? And the first decision you did, you, 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 know, you left all the sanctions on the Russian. Somebody saying serving the USA army does not mean serving the country. It means serving political agenda. Well, this is their intention. My intention is something else. When I joined the army, I wasn't joining to be a soldier for Trump or Biden or George Bush. As simple as that. So he is the one who left sanctions. All sanctions on Russia left by Biden. Trump, he put them. You know, and the funny is, they accused Trump that he is an agent for the Russian, and nobody put sanctions on the Russian as much as Trump. Do you see how the hypocrisy work? At the same time, the USA, they want to convince the Ukrainian that we are going to put sanctions. Why you left them first of all? I mean, did, guy, did this guy give a Crimea back? He did not. What happened? I mean, why you left the sanctions? Somebody give me a reason. Why you leave the sanctions? For, for the benefit of who exactly? So I wanted today to speak about it because I want to speak to the Ukrainian first and to the world second. Don't let Western countries drive you into war. They will throw you in fire and they will leave you alone. If Ukraine go in war now with Russia, and then they would sanction Russia, what that would do to Ukraine? Nothing. What exactly you provide? People will be hungry, people will be suffering, people will have, they will lose everything. I mean, the country is poor country already, not poor because they don't have resource, because it's badly, they have a bad management. What sanctions will do to Ukraine? What does that mean? That is the most silly, stupid support ever you can do. People should remember that putting sanctions on Russia will improve Russia not the opposite. Just to explain to you in a simple way what sanctions mean. Let us say you are a person who live in a farm. You know, you have little land, you live in it. And then I say to you, you cannot buy tomato from us, you cannot buy uh, knives from us, you cannot buy a hammer from us, you cannot buy, you can't buy anything. So what do you do? Then you start, a new, let us say, a line of production. So you grow your own tomato, you make your own hammer, and the money will stay in your pocket because you're not buying. You're not spending. 
which means Russia will flourish, not the opposite. They say to you now the price of uh, stock market in Russia is down and the currency, the ruble, is down too. But this is normal. People, they fear war, so they exchange. Change. They knew they can make money, you know, exchange of money. They say if a war happened, the currency will go down. And then if we buy now a dollar, we will make money later selling the dollar. This is not because the economy will really suffer. So for us, as a Christians, we look at this war as something evil. Both are Christian nation. They share a lot of history, bad and good history, bad memory and good memory. Russian, they've been aggressive against the Ukrainian. They used them through centuries too. We need to remember that. So Ukrainian today, they should fight for their independence, not to be a puppy of anyone. No more puppy. Not to the Russian, not to the American. When Trump, he called the Ukrainian president and he tell him, we will give you assistance if you go after Joe Biden. How insulting. A true leader, he will spit on the face of a Trump. He will hang up the phone on him and he will say to him, you don't dictate to me what I will do in my country. Countries are made by a true leader, not by a potato. So Ukrainian, they should have a real leader who will not be a potato to anyone. He is going to string his country, build an army, slowly, technology, not by numbers, support the economy, and then you will not be begging and kissing hands here and there. Oh, oh, we are upset the German will not give us weapon. Why the German will give you weapon? They are your enemy. The German is always the enemy of every decent country. I'm talking about the government. When the Turkish, they said we are going to invade Greece, the same week, the German, they signed an agreement with Turkey to sell them four submarines. This is Germany. When Europe always free Constantinia, German army is the one who stop the freedom of Constantinia. History repeat itself. People don't learn. UK will never support you. UK don't care for you. UK, they want you to die. You see, this is the difference between us as a Christians and other. Like we spoke about Islam many times. Uh, in Islam, the God of Islam, he wants you to die for him. The God of Christianity is willing to die for you, and he did. All the NATO, this is what they want from Ukraine. They want the Ukraine to die for them. As simple as that. They are not supporting Ukraine. They don't care for Ukraine. All the little money they, they are giving you now is going to be demolished in one week of war. I don't know how many of you own weapon. If you go to do training, just a training with gun, not gun machine, just a normal pistol. If you have 9mm or whatever millimeter, if you have a Schmeiser or Browning or Preta or any gun, 15 minutes of shooting will cost you $100 at least. So who is going to cover the cost of war? Cost of war is not only weapon. People die. Orphans, children, European Union, America will pay for your children. They will rebuild your houses. If they can't rebuild your houses, why didn't they do it right now? You know, what, what, are, what are they waiting for? So, Ukrainian, they should be smarter, and I'm talking about leadership. Ukrainian people are poor. They don't, I mean, they don't know what to do. They have a dummy in their, in, their, in their house as a president, and I call him literally a dummy. Literally a dummy. I could not find someone more stupid, and I think I believe he's corrupt too. He, is, he become a puppy. So now we decide to earn our freedom from the Russian, and now we become puppies of the Western. Ukrainian, they should replace their president with someone he is not going to be the puppy of anyone, 
not for the Russian, not for the American, not for the NATO. You do not need the NATO. Joining the NATO is the biggest mistake because if a war happened ever between Russia and the NATO, you will be the first one to demolish and nobody will cry for you. All what the Americans they are doing, they are pushing the front line of the war. So if a war happened, oh, Russian first, they will burn Ukraine. Oh, they will burn first Bulgaria. They will burn Romania. They will burn those little ones. So the little ones is a sacrifice. You die first. You did not join the NATO. And the NATO will never protect you. So I pray that this war will never happen. And I don't believe that Biden will go for war. And we would not talk about this yet. You see, if somebody want to go for war, you don't make too much noise about it. I never heard of such a war like this. Have you ever heard of somebody advertise for war? Like, you know, hey, I'm going to go for war. Get ready. I'm coming. Not, not this week. Not this week. Six months from now. You know, I, mean, I never heard such a, you know, this is, this is not even in the language of war. People want to go in war, you have to have, uh, you know, war have rules. Number one, surprise. You surprise your enemy. You don't tell the enemy I'm coming tomorrow. Number two, you don't give your enemy a chance to prepare himself and get the support, any support, even just public support, like, you know, uh, propaganda support. Number three, the time of war, it should happen as a choice of yours, not a choice of their or them. If Putin want to invade really Ukraine, he should have done that long time ago. He will not be waiting. What Putin is doing is scaring the hell of everybody so he can gain in negotiation what he cannot gain in war. And actually now you will see we, I heard that the president of France is going to meet with Putin and see what do you want exactly. It's what he wants exactly. He wants to force them to come to his table. I am the king and you are a bunch of puppies. And they are actually. All those NATO's president, they are a bunch of puppies, including Joe, Joe Biden. When you hear Fox News, Fox News, when they want, they are against Russia. When they want, they are against Ukraine. I just saw two days ago uh, a little clip of this guy. His name is Drucker. He was saying, why want to support Ukraine? Why want to go for war for Ukraine? This is a corrupt country. This Look how evil they are. When, 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 uh, when they want, when Obama was in the office, why Obama don't stand for Russia? Why he don't do anything? Okay, Trump, he came. Uh, you know, I mean, the, they changed the, change the, the direction of talk. They switch upside down, depending who is in the office. So if Biden says we should support Ukraine, they should say, why we should support Ukraine? If Biden say we should not support Ukraine, they will go on TV and say, why you should not, why you should support Ukraine? So it doesn't matter what he say, they will go against him. It's a political agenda. But at the end of the day, nations will die. For them, it's just a game of news. In America, it's just a game. For Ukrainian, it's a matter of life and existence. So what those evil countries are doing, they are using those poor Ukrainian as a trap. They wish that the Russian, they would invade Ukraine. So now we can put the maximum sanctions on Russia. And that will increase the chance of Biden to win the coming election the midterm, which is already he is losing it, to make him gain some like, you know, like he's strong. He can stand up for somebody. He is not just an old guy who cannot remember his name. All of this is meaningless. The West is just a playing game and they are using Ukraine as a sacrifice for their own meal.
So I pray that a war like this will never happen, and I believe it's not going to happen. I, I, I pray that I'm right. Because as I said, the Russian they do not need to wait for anyone if they are planning ready to go. And actually, the more they wait, the more it's not better for them. There's no point. They do not need to prepare for an army. As the Western saying, they have 120 something. Those people, they have an, uh, more than a million active soldier, more than a million, and two million are reserved. So in 24 hours, they can have three millions. And not to forget to mention that the weapon they have is nothing to compare to anything the Ukrainians have. So we pray that this will never happen. We pray that the Ukrainian will be smarter and they will not be drawn into, into a war which is not for their benefit, even if this is their right to defend their land. But you should not go for war unless you can win the war. You know, you might be brave. You know, Ukrainian people are brave people. They are not coward. But bravery is something and being stupid is something else. If you are brave and you are going, you are one and there are ten, you know, those things can work only in the movie. Like one fight against ten, he beat them all. He don't even, like, the only thing happened is his t-shirt is, you know, have a hole in it somewhere. Those only in the movies. This is reality. Reality is that Russia is not a country you want to fight with. Even if the right in your side, even if you are really defending your land, if you can stop them where they are now, this is the best you can do. Until one day maybe, you can establish your own very powerful army, build your own nukes, and then anyone want to play with you, he is going to play with you. You do not, you're not going to be under the mercy of giving me some missiles from America. The blessing of America, which is nothing. This war is nothing but evil. Both countries are Christians. And it's not for the benefit of anyone. What if the Ukrainian, my friend, the Ukrainian should not go for anything now. They cannot take a Crimea, they cannot take anything. As I said, if I want to go, if I want to go for a war, I should not go for a war. At the end of it, my children will be slaughtered. I will go for war where I can get the land back and win. Not a war, I will lose more land. You see, the, I, will, I will remind you of what the Arab they do with Israel. Each time they attack Israel, they lose more war, more, more land. Not only they lose personal and money and treasure, they lose their land. Until one day they lost all of Jerusalem. That because they were stupid. Jerusalem is gone from their hand forever. Why? Because they were driven by religion. We want to fight the Jews. But they are not ready for a, such a fight. So they go to attack the Jews because they want to throw them in the ocean, and then they find themselves that the Jews are throwing them in the ocean. So you don't want to be the same as the Arab when they attack Israel. And instead of taking a land, you claim it's yours, which is not. You lose more land, and not only that, you, you, you lose Jerusalem. Smart leaders, my friend, is the same as somebody playing chess. When he play, he play a few steps in advance, even though he did not move the stones yet. The steps he play is in his head. So it's not just moving a soldier to the front, it's how long the soldier can stay there and what will happen next. Somebody saying the arms sent to Ukraine will be in the market. I don't think so because they didn't have any in control of it. All the weapons they sent to Ukraine, my friend, those they are not, they don't even have control of them. You know, they will take them back later. Just wait. 
the only thing will stay there is the animation it, they don't give things for free you know uh, even even when when biden he left for taliban a lot of trucks and etc they hold the money of taliban in america nothing nothing for free they will take it back so anyway uh this is my opinion about this uh war and i believe there's no war will happen and i hope so and i pray so i love really to see ukrainian flourishing i love to see ukrainian have a true president a real man he will not be a puppy neither to the russian neither to the american neither to germany i want to see ukrainian flourishing and they do not need to beg for money and assistance they will give assistance to others don't be the same as the rest of europe if you've been in romania you will see how sad romania is Romanian, when they joined European Union, they were so happy, so excited. Finally, finally, we will have money. Go and see Romania. The country is a ghost town. Nobody doing farming no more. There's nothing, nobody except old people. The whole, the whole young ones is in Europe. And what they are doing? Washing dishes. Doing paint. Plumbing. They give them the lower jobs. And they always insult them and make fun of them. Even they call them gypsy. Western of Europe always they look down at East of Europe. Racism never change. Ukrainian should not allow that to happen. I just saw in the comments somebody saying they are corrupt. They are corrupt. This is his view of the Ukrainian. Well, there is corruption, but who said we are not corrupt here too? We just talk about Joe Biden and his son. Is it Trump corrupt or not? Have you ever heard of a, a guy, he become a president, and then he hire his son-in-law to be the consultant, and then a week before he threat Qatar? To stop supporting terrorism a week after Qatar rent from his own his own his, his son-in-law a, a building and the rent is for one billion dollar rent for 99 years to come have you ever heard of somebody paying rent for 99 years in the future isn't it obvious this is a bribe so this is what you have always in the mindset of people that those people are corrupt there's nothing good there Don't you see the garbage in your own countries? Don't you see people arrested in Walmart for stealing and thefting, stealing underwear? In this country, just leave, leave the, the hammer of the police. The whole country will be burning. Always they think about themselves that they are better people than the rest. This is how Western people, they think that we are better, they are, they are worse, they are corrupt. We are shuffling our corruption to them. We send our sons so they can make money. I mean, this guy, Hunter, he don't, what, what is the experience he have in oil? Isn't it obvious that this is a bribe? The FBI, they got his computer. They have a lot of scandals in it. And until now, there is no arrest. And you are talking about corruption? We have Abdul here saying, you call yourself a Christian and you support Trump. He is the most racist. You know, Harun, you are just as stupid like your prophet, as usual. You want to talk about racism? Isn't it your prophet, he says, Allah will not let someone black enter heaven? He will make them always all, all white? Can you find me a statement of Trump like your prophet? Isn't it your prophet is the one who says, when Allah, he created the white people, he hid the right shoulder of Adam, and from there he created white ants. Or white people like ants, white ants. And he said to them, you go to heaven and I don't care. And he created the black people from the shoulder of Adam, the left shoulder. 
and they were created like black charcoal ants. And he said to them, you go to hell and you don't care. Can you find me where Trump, he said what your prophet said? So a scumbag like you and like your prophet talking about racism. All those who speak about racism usually, too much addicted to it, they are racist. They are against racism. When Islam is a racism, isn't it your prophet, he says, you are the best of mankind? How? What make the Muslims the best of mankind? He said, you go and you bring human beings like animals and the chains around their neck. You know, Trump is a racist, you know, he's a racist. Yes, he's a racist, you know, we are Muslims, we are, we are, we support, we are against racism, brother. We bring you and put the chain around your head, okay? Okay? Alhamdulillah, we will bring you like a dog. And not only that, in case you do not know, that 99.9 .9 of the black African slaves brought to the West by the Arab Muslims in North Africa, they are the one who captured them and they are the one who sold them and the biggest slavery market was in the world is Morocco. We are, we are Muslims. Did you see what the white man he did to the black people? And not only that, their prophet, he was owning tons of black slaves and he made fun of their look. You know, we are Muslims against, you know, me, they support Trump. Why, why you mentioned that? You see what you did to your prophet? Just because you said something, I, 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 I whip the floor with your prophet. And we show reference here. We don't make stories. Trump, he made a, he made a special investment for a black area so they can flourish. He, he guaranteed a loan for black colleges so they do not need to beg for it every year. He did what Obama never did. Still, I believe Trump is corrupt. See, here we don't take a side. We say it as it is. People like it, don't like it. This is not my business. So going back to our topic, the Abdul, he did interrupt us. He called himself Harun, which means a cat. Eh. Cat, he go. Cat, he come. There are lions in the internet. There are cats in the front of Israel. So at the end of the day, we pray that Ukrainian, they will be smarter and they will not fall into the trap of either beast. They will deal with their situation in a very intelligent way. And I pray that this coming election, I don't know when it's going to be in Ukraine, they will choose a real president. This guy should go. This guy is horrible. His plan, desperate plan to join the NATO is the biggest mistake. That will bring invasion on you. And might you might say we are free to choose where we want to go. Well, you need to take in your consideration that American will not accept the same word you say if it's going to happen in their backyard. If the Russian, they want to bring missiles to Cuba or to Mexico or Nicaragua or Venezuela, they will go crazy and they will invade. It's not for your benefit to be part of any side. Stay independent. Don't listen to the beast. And war is not for your benefit, not when you are weak. And war is always evil, even when you are victorious. Because war means bloodshed. Wars mean orphans. Wars mean widows. Wars only justified if you are defending yourself. So Ukrainian, I support them defending themselves. I do. But they should not go for war for the benefit of this and that. And they should not trust any Western countries, for their support is a false support. Sending you little animation from here and there, or, uh, you know, we want to send you like an anti-tank uh, anti missiles. 
but all of us we knew that those anti-tank missiles don't work against the tanks of the Russian. They don't work. They tried them in Syria, they did not work. So they are sending the weapon, they are useless. So later they will say to you, do you know, we gave you like a, a, a billion dollar weapon, a hundred dollar of this weapon. But when you try to use them in the ground, those weapon is useless. What is a China took Taiwan? My friend the same, if China took Taiwan, what USA will do nothing. I mean, this is all this garbage, you see. Uh, uh, the only one can fight against China is that the people of Taiwan if they don't want China, but nobody will support them, regardless if you believe if you if you like China to take it or not. The support of the American is useless. Nobody will go for war for you. You need to remember that. They will not. They will encourage you to go for war. They would love to see those other countries wasting their resource fighting other countries and this is the whole point is to keep russia busy and use this war and you know the the rest is a casualty like ukraine lithuania etc georgia let them go in war with, with russia what we will lose and we will we will stay watching and uh, we will we will play our our uh, our party Russia has taken over Syria and Iran. No, they did not take over Iran, but they took over Syria, and I'm glad they did. Is that wrong? What do you want, Al-Qaeda to take over, or Erdogan? Just think about it. I'm so glad they did. Actually, Putin is the best thing he did. He killed more than 400,000 terrorists in Syria, while the American was supporting them with weapons. Obama, he sent $650 million to the terrorists in Syria. So actually Putin, even though I oppose him now in what he is doing in Ukraine, he did a great job in Syria. If not him, actually the Christians in Syria would be slaughtered. And it might appear that Putin is supporting Syria because of the Christians, and this is true actually, there's a true part of it, that the patriarch of Syria, he, he's an Orthodox, majority of Greek Orthodox of Christians there. He made a special request to the patriarch of Moscow and they spoke to Putin to get involved immediately. But this is work at the end to the benefit of, of Russia. As we speak, the Russian now, they are moving four big, big, big war, game war boats or ships to the Mediterranean where they are going to end in Syria. So now they have a huge base in the in the middle of the Middle East. Priceless location. Very smart move from Putin. But we don't want we don't want the Russian and the Ukrainian to kill each other. Both are Christians, both they share history, even language. There is no winner in this war except the one who hate them both. So we pray that both, they will go for peace, they will find the solutions. We pray that the Ukrainian people, they will choose a better leadership, but they are not under the influence of anyone, neither the Russian, neither the Western. A person who believe that Ukraine come first, we don't want to be with this against that, and we don't want to be with that against this. This is how smart nations they play. Switzerland, they flourish for a very simple reason. They did not take a side. And Ukrainian, they can make their land better than Switzerland. They are way more rich, actually, than any Switzerland. This is a country can feed the world, but yet people inside it, they are suffering. When you have a smart leader, people, they flourish. When you have an idiot, people will be destroyed. Same as what happened to Israel. When the king is a smart, Israel is a flourishing. When the king is a stupid, Israel is collapsing. 
always history repeat itself. I'm not going to keep you longer, but I want to remind you that uh, today, in a few hours from now, we will have a Bible study if you'd like to join us. Maybe the admin can post the link. We will have a Bible study, and uh, uh, there we don't speak about politics, for sure. We will not talk about Islam, too. We don't debate about Islam. Here is for the garbage of Muhammad. There is just the holy word of the, of the Lord. So we would not mix things. Anyone will try even to take us away from our topic. The admins will give him a warning. And if he continue, we will block him. So we will be live in a few hours. And uh, today we will study uh, John first, the first uh, chapter of John. Uh, and I'm really excited. You see, I promised people to do Bible study a long time ago. But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, sometimes those things you need to have a spiritually ready for it. It's not just like you go and you do. And as you know, <clears throat> I am not a priest. I don't claim to be one. I'm just a Christian believer. And I will share my heart and whatever the Lord he will give me with you in this study. That's why we say we will do Bible study together. So if you care, the, the, the admin post in the link, you can join us and you can tell your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the other channel if you're likely to be with us there. All right. So I want to say thank you again. Don't forget to pray for Ukrainian people. They are wonderful people. We pray even to the Russian that they will be, you know, uh, they will be just and they will be kind to their neighbors, the Ukrainian, and they will not be the oppressor. We pray that the Ukrainian, they will have a president who is a smart, decent. We pray that the Lord will help them to fight the corruption and get them leaders who clean the corruption from the land. Corruption is exists everywhere. Even inside the same house, your own family, you will find corrupt or two or three person. And the worst corruption when the head of the house is corrupt. Don't judge the people if you do not know them. Don't. Ukrainians are wonderful people. Those who say to you it's a corrupt country. There's garbage everywhere. And you know, when somebody is poor and he do something not lawful, at least he is a poor person. In this country, we are rich. People are blessed with a lot of work, money. We have people go to Walmart to steal an underwear. We have people who stop in your front yard to steal your delivery. And we are not in Ukraine. So why you blame the poor for things that they do, but you don't blame the rich for being drug dealers? Don't judge the poor. If you are in their place, God knows what you will do. So I want to say thank you, and I hope I will be able to see you soon in a few hours from now. And we will do our Bible study, and I hope people will enjoy it. And again, you don't need to agree with me. And even you don't need to listen to me. You are here by choice. If you don't like it, you do not need to be here. Don't forget to leave your comment and please be respectful. And we are not against, we don't want to hear people saying bad words about the Russian or Ukrainian. I believe both countries are, countries deserve respect. Leaders is the one who make decisions of war, not people in both countries. So, pray that war will never happen, and I believe the war will never happen. This is how I see it. I don't go by news. I study situations. News agencies, they never tell you what's happening. They tell you propaganda from both sides, any side. Thank you, God bless you, and see you soon again. Take care.
I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 